We're starting. Packet from where 
you are, worship with us with all that you need, uh, the liturgy, the music, everything for this Sunday. Those of you here in person, if you are visiting with us, we thank you for joining us this day and pray that this is a welcome for you in this community of faith that is full of hospitality for all who come and all with whom we minister. In your bulletin today is a flyer for our Easter offering. Please be sure and read that and note the special offering will be received today and uh, next Sunday. It benefits our new church ministry and uh, the re revitalization and the opening of new congregations in our tradition. Also on the table in the back are uh, the envelopes for you to order uh, flowers that will be displayed at Easter spring flowers in honor or memory of someone. If you haven't ordered yours yet, uh, please pick up an envelope and drop that in the uh, offering plate in the back. Uh, before you leave, today is the last day for that. And all of the list will be included in our Easter Sunday bulletin next week as the flowers are on display. Again, welcome. What a glorious day to gather as we begin our Holy Week journey uh, to Resurrection Day and the hope that comes with it. Let us breathe in God's Spirit. Be reminded that God gathers us here to be the body of Christ, to be one in Christ as we worship our God and serve our Christ. Let us worship our God now. We're our opening hymn. Uh, we have a little change in order today with our procession. So please stand again for our opening hymn. It is our theme song for our wandering heart, Lenten journey, uh, Return to You. Let us sing together.
our call to worship. Sing songs of loudest praise. Hosanna. Sing songs that are boldly unashamed. Hosanna. Sing songs without being afraid. Hosanna. Sing for the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Hosanna. Let us worship the one worthy to be praised. Yes, we worship the God of our salvation. Let us pray. God of grace, your word for us is like a beautiful song to our ears. It is the melody that we long to sing. The refrain that we pray will be our hearts. So as we tune our hearts to you this day, help us to sing to you the song of your word and Allow us to hear your truth, your lessons, your will. Thank you. 
bind the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, who is good, whose steadfast love endures forever. A word for God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And if you join us now in our prayer hymn, All Glory, Love, and Honor, the words will be on the screen, or you may find it in the Chalice Hymnal, page 192, verse 3.
from a, a class, a, a course that he's taking that would make a big difference in his uh, career opportunities. We also want to uh, remember the many who are on our prayer list, the family of those who have died, including Wally's friends, Father Joe. His service is scheduled uh, for this Thursday. Uh, he lives in Cleveland. The family is there. And unfortunately, Wally and his mom will not be able to attend that service. So be in prayer for all of them. And you see the many of, of our prayer list are family of those who have died. Um, so please join in prayer for their uh, time of grief and loss and uh, comfort in God's presence with them. As we continue to pray for Ukraine and for the impact of the israel Hamas war, we learned the news uh, about the attack on the Moscow concert hall, bringing back memories of the October 7th attack from Hamas on the concert that was uh, in Israel. There are at least 130 known dead in the uh, concert hall attack and the shooting and fire that occurred, and there are several missing, so that number is likely to continue to rise. We have the joys of birthdays this, this day to celebrate. Laurel's birthday is Tuesday. Frank Dearman and Walt uh, Lehman's birthdays are Saturday. And I'm actually going to make it to another birthday myself next Sunday, so, so far. Um, if you have a joy or concern that you would like added to the prayer list or an update to what's on the prayer list, please send that to me uh, prior to the service so we can include it. Uh, if you would like to have it added to the prayer list, please let us know that as well. We'll go to God in prayer and close with our Lord's Prayer. And again, those worshiping with us online will have the opportunity to name your joys and concerns from where you are. So let us pray. God, we thank you for the gift of your presence with us in all that we experience in this world, in all of our griefs and loss and joys and celebrations. You are there. We thank you for the ways that you pull us together in community. You gather us up as your own. You fill us with your spirit and give us a mission to go out and share your love in the world. We pray, O oh God, for a willingness to uh, be present to those that we've mentioned this day who need a, a special prayer, a special presence, a, spread, a special uh, encouragement. Help us to reach out into the world and share your way with all who are struggling, with all who are living the way of violence and hatred, that are living the way of holding grudges and, and carrying a deep harm in their hearts. We pray, O oh God, for your guidance as we seek to be the church that the world needs today. Fill us with your strength. Be with those that we've mentioned this day that walk the path of grief and loss, of unknown diagnoses, of treatments, of recovery. You know our needs. We pray, O oh God, that we know that you are the hope for all that we experience. We offer this moment for those worshiping online to name their joys and concerns from where they are. celebrate life, to celebrate renewal, to celebrate hope. We give thanks for the 
noise of babies and toddlers that are among us, for those who step up to be present to them, for all who live into our discipleship to which you call us. We give thanks, for we know it's all from you. Hear us, O God, as we continue in the way that Jesus taught us, saying, Blessed One, our Father and our Mother, holy is your name. May your love be embodied in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, and we forgive those who sin against us. Protect us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love, and all that your love brings to earth, and the fullness of love that will be, are yours now and forever. Amen. And now we have our special music from our Vista Voices, Hosanna.
morning comes from the Gospel according to John, chapter 12, verses 12 to 16. I invite you to reflect on that image during the, the sermon and see what you see in that gaze of uh, Peter on the screen. The larger image on the left is of him and his confusion during uh, the the entry into Jerusalem, the mirror image at the top is his confusion on Resurrection Day when the tomb is empty. Songs as loud as praise today is our phrase from the hymn, Come Thou Fount. Throughout our Lenten journey this year, we wandered with Peter as he wrestled with his faith, his trust, and his beliefs. And now as we join the crowds entering the gates of Jerusalem and arrive at Holy Week, where is Peter now? His head must be swimming with confusion about all that's been taking place. John is the passage that is the most briefest of all the accounts of the entry into Jerusalem, and Peter is not mentioned. Up until this point, everything that's been taking place has been more and more confusing, and tensions have been rising. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead which does intensify the plot to arrest and kill him, to the point that he retreats into the wilderness with his disciples. The crowds begin to question if Jesus will even attend the Passover festival. And then, as it draws near, Jesus emerges from the wilderness and journeys to Bethany. He stays at the home of Lazarus, where he is lavishly anointed and careful cared for by Mary, an act that his disciple Judas questions. Plots to kill Lazarus as well begin to stir. That brings us to our brief passage of John's account of Jesus and his disciples entering Jerusalem. Again, Peter isn't mentioned, so we're invited to use our imaginations and wonder where Peter might be at this point. In the story. Where would you be? Listen now for a word from God as you hear these words from John 12, 12 to 16, describing the scene when Jesus enters the city that praises him and then curses him to death. The next day, after Jesus emerges from the wilderness, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm leaves, of palm trees, and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming sitting on a donkey's colt. Jesus' disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. A word from God for the people of God. Thanks to be God. Imagine yourself in this crowd. Imagine seeing Peter, with this look on his face. Perhaps this would be the look on your face. What do you see around you in the crowd? What is your experience? You've been following Jesus these past few years, so you know how intense things have been getting. Are you hanging close to Jesus that day? Or are you hanging back safely at a distance just in case things go wrong? 
It's believed that there likely were two crowds of paraders that day, one crowd entering the gates of Jerusalem on one side of the city, shouting, Hosanna, meaning save us, to Caesar, their emperor king. The other, likely a much smaller crowd entering the gates on the other side of the city, shouting Hosanna in celebration of their Savior, Jesus the Christ, the anointed one of God, who came to save the world from itself. Their shouts of Hosanna would have been viewed as treason against Caesar and the Roman Empire. So where do you think Peter was? Where would you be? The text, remaining true to John's Gospel, states that the disciples were confused by the events. I imagine that the crowd's exuberance swirling all around them left the disciples anxious about being in Jerusalem. After all, Jesus has been talking death for some time now. Balancing joy and fear can be very challenging. In his confusion, was Peter excited to witness the people praise Jesus in one moment? Then in the next moment, fearful and skeptical of anyone who might be trying to arrest Jesus and maybe the disciples too? The crowds rejoice in Jesus on this day and cry out, crucify him, a few days later. Crowds can be fickle, you know, kind of like our faith. I can remember my mom warning me of that when I was a teenager and wanting to go with the others somewhere she didn't think I should go. I cry out, but everyone is going, except me. <laughs> Many of you have said it or heard it or both. She would then ask every time, if everyone was jumping off a cliff, would you go follow them off the cliff? Would you still want to follow them and be part of that, everyone? Yes, crowds can be fickle. When we follow the crowd, we risk getting caught up in, an, in unimaginable things. I can't, can't help but wonder where Peter was in this crowded city of Jerusalem. I wonder where I would be, where you would be. You've heard the show, what, what would you do, right? Most, if not all of us, I imagine, would like to think we do the right thing in those situations when the unknowing people on the show act with grace and compassion, advocacy and solidarity, standing up for another who is being wronged, shamed, or even threatened. We would like to believe we speak up, even when we didn't realize the cameras were rolling. We would imagine ourselves standing with Jesus, excitedly joining our praise of him with the others, even knowing that we were in the heart of conflict with the Roman Empire. What would you do? Would you try to blend in with the crowds, Hang close to Jesus, hoping he'd save you if something went wrong. Would you follow Jesus off that cliff of standing boldly in your faith and your discipleship? John says that the disciples were confused. Perhaps we would be too. As Luther Seminary's Dr. Caroline Lewis states, we're not supposed to comprehend that God, the great I Am, who came to dwell with us in the flesh of the human body. And at this point in the story, it's not possible 
to grasp what Jesus' reign is all about. No wonder the disciples could not understand as they watched Jesus ride by. By then, the text says, but then, the text says, they remembered. Afterwards, they remembered. What exactly they remember is not clear. Perhaps that's the moment when they remembered all that Jesus had taught them, all they'd seen Jesus do, all they experienced of his authority, the power of his love for them and for all people. Like Peter and the other disciples in the crowds, waving their branches, we're also witnesses to the meaning of Jesus' ministry and the reign of God's love through Christ in the world today. When we leave this place in less than an hour, what will we remember about this day in the life of Jesus? What will we take from our collective worship of the God who sent Jesus into the world not to condemn it, but to save it? as we also read in John's Gospel. Will our hosannas still ring out by Friday? Or will the hard truths of the events we will witness this week silence our praise, move us into the shadows of denial and abandonment? Or will we stay close to Jesus, singing songs of loudest praise, Will the hardness of this world silence our voices and our proclaiming Christ with our lives? Or will we keep looking to Jesus for how to be in this world? For Jesus' guidance in navigating these confusing and disconcerting times. The world is in desperate need for the church to step up with our witness to the ways of Christ. To not hide in the shadows for fear of being noticed. To stand firm in a willingness to come alongside those who are suffering from the brokenness of this world. Like all who are experiencing grief caused by gun violence. To advocate for those who are experiencing threats from crowds before they end up like trans teen next Benedict who was bullied for being who she is and later died from a drug overdose with no charges expected to be filed. To reach out to those who are marginalized for the perception of being different. We're more like Peter than we think. And we're more like each other than we know. What? will you do? Where will you be? Welcome to Holy Week. I hope you'll join us here on Thursday for the final part of our Wandering Heart Lenten journey. Before we can join our praises together in resurrection life and baptism on Easter Sunday. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the witness of Peter, the flawed witness of Peter that reminds us that in our flawed witness, we are being faithful to you. You use us as you used Peter. You use all of us to spread your gospel, your good news in Christ. Help us to stand boldly in the breach of the brokenness in this world so that more of your creation can breathe easier knowing that they matter. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now we have our Vista Bell special music. Hosanna, loud Hosanna.
to John tells us that crowds gathered to praise Jesus as he entered Jerusalem, singing and shouting with confidence. After describing the crowd, however, the gospel writer zooms in on the disciples and tells us that while the crowd shouted praise at Jesus, the disciples were confused. The text says, and the disciples did not understand what was happening. A lot of our lives may look like this. Either we understand God's presence in our lives and want to shout it from the rooftop, or we're standing on the side of the parade missing our chance to sing. That is why we need the prayer of confession, because life happens fast. And without a doubt, we have stood where the disciples stood. So let us stand together and join in prayer, for we don't want to miss our chance to sing. Please stand and join together in our prayer of confession. Holy God, on how we, oh, how we want to run into the streets and sing your praise. We want to be bold and unashamed of this good news gospel. However, too often we find ourselves choosing instead to stand against the wall. Forgive us for the moments when we could be the parade, but instead find ourselves choosing to stand on the sidelines. Too often we stay quiet. Too often we let others carry the song. Show us which songs are ours to sing. Show us which parades are ours to lead. Give us the courage and conviction to do both. With hope and honesty we pray. Amen. No matter where you are on the parade grounds, whether you're waving palm branches through the streets or standing against the wall, quiet and cautious, Jesus march for you. Jesus love, his striving for justice and mercy, it was for you. You are included in this story and nothing can ever change that. So hear these words and trust them deep in your bones. We have reason to sing. For Jesus Christ loved you yesterday, loves you today, and will love you tomorrow. You are forgiven, claimed, and sent by God to serve. Go out and sing. Go out trusting these words. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat>
for this time of communion. I invite you to stand and join together in our communion hymn, This is a Day of New Beginnings.
you for the gift of this table, the invitation that remains open to everyone for all time, for Christ who includes all, for your spirit that fills all, for a world that needs to know your love, your hope, your invitation to experience the joy of community of the Lord. We give thanks that you call us to bring our whole selves, our resources, both financial and time, opportunities, passions, and ideas, to collectively be your church at work in the world. For us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you're worshiping with us online and feel that God is calling you to uh, join in this fellowship and ministry here, I invite you to reach out to me following the service. You can find my email address, the number to the church, and reach out and let us know. If you're visiting with us here in person and believe that God is moving you to become a part of the community of faith here, I invite you to come forward or reach out to me after the service as we stand and sing our closing hymn, verses 1 and 2 of all glory, laws, and honor. Words are on the screen. Please sing.
and share your love with all. Amen. Amen.